Good morning, everybody. Unless, of course, you're watching this video in the evening. In that case, good evening, and you are watching Time Travel TV. We are right here in the Garden of England of Kent, uh, in the city of Canterbury. I'm right here at St Augustine's Abbey to talk to you about the time when England went from being a very unchristian country to being a very Christian country indeed. So our story starts when the Romans leave Britain in 410 AD and we are left with the Britons who live in Britain. And nobody is exactly sure how widespread Christianity was in this time in Britain, however, there is evidence that it was there. However, when the Saxons came, they brought them a, with them a new religion called Germanic Paganism, which was absolutely nothing like Christianity whatsoever. Now, Pope Gregory the Great, off in Rome, was walking through the market one day and saw English children being sold as slaves in the market, and this upset him very much so. So, in 595 AD, he decided to send one of his best monks, Augustine, to England to sort out the matter and turn them all into Christians. So, he did that exactly, and in uh, 597, Augustine arrived in the Kingdom of Kent. He was met by King Ethelbert of Kent, and Ethelbert was at first suspicious of uh, this Augustine chap because he thought he would lay a spell on him. However, soon Augustine had persuaded him to allow him to preach his Christian teachings. Now, Ethelbert gave him this piece of land in which St Augustine's uh, Abbey was built. Soon. Ethelbert converted Christianity himself and most of the other people in uh, the Kingdom of Kent. Now, how we must remember that uh, Ethelbert was not no stranger to Christianity because his wife was Queen Bertha, who was a Frankish princess, who was herself a Christian. Now, Ethelbert wasn't only King of Kent, he was the overlord of all the other Anglo-Saxon kingdoms, so he used his influence to get other Anglo-Saxon kings to convert to Christianity themselves. Most famous of this was King Radwold, who was King of East Anglia. Now, after the death of uh, Ethelbert, Radwold took the title of overlord and he was a very powerful man and was able to use his influence to persuade even more people to convert to Christianity. However, uh, Radwald wasn't a very good Christian because there is evidence that he kept both Christian and pagan shrines around. However, most people now only know Radwald because he's the Sutton Who guy and he wore that fun sort of helmet, didn't he? Anyway, by uh, 601 AD, most of England was uh, Christian. Uh, St Augustine, I say the monk Augustine was a saint, we're getting ahead of ourselves, he became a saint and he was buried right here at St Augustine's Abbey. Right over there, there was a um, abbey built here. This one we're seeing behind us here is remnants of the Norman one, not the Saxon one. Under that little wooden thing over there, which you probably can't see very well, that's the only remains visible of the uh, one that was built by Augustine. Now, Augustine was also made the first Archbishop of Canterbury who resided in that cathedral, which is basically a little bit behind the tree. I apologise for that. I'll get onto English Heritage about chopping that tree down. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to Time Travel TV. I'll see you next time.